Hi, my name is Emma Boys, and I'm going to introduce you to my very first paper cutting craft pad, Adventures in Paper Cutting. And today I'm going to take you through um, one of the templates available in the craft pad and I'm going to give you my top tips on how to approach the design. In order to create a first paper cut, there's going to be two tools that you need. First of all, you're going to need a self-healing cutting mat and the second thing is a scalpel. Make sure you have a blade that is sharp. I cannot stress this point enough. A sharp blade is essential. Now there are two types that you can go for. You can um, have a handle with um, a changeable blade or you can have a disposable scalpel. When you get your paper cut craft pad home, the very first thing that I would recommend that you do is that you get your practice sheet out. Um, this is something just to give you a feel for the paper before you attempt on the actual templates. Now, everybody's going to hold their scalpel slightly differently and everybody's going to apply a different amount of pressure. So if you have a little practice first, just to give you a feel for um, how you will approach it. When I first start approaching a design, what I really like to do is I like to cut around the paper that's not needed as part of the template and I just cut this away and I do this to make the paper size smaller so it's less likely to catch on the edges of the paper cutting mat. Now as a beginner I would recommend that you start in the centre of the design and that you approach the smallest pieces first. Um, I recommend this because you don't want to spend lots of time cutting out the easier sections and then get into the hard bits in the middle and make a mistake and then have to start again. So I would find the smallest pieces from the centre and then I'm going to put my tip into the corner. Now you don't have to start straight away, you can take a breath and just think about where you're going to go and not apply in lots of pressure just really lightly, just follow the line with your blade and take it out, take a deep breath and then find the point again and follow the line and then what I like to do is I like to rotate the paper so that I'm always cutting towards myself and then I use the tip to just move the excess paper away that's the first cut now I'm going to find the next small fiddly bit. I'm going to go to this bit here. Again I'm just going to put my tip into the corner and I'm just going to lightly follow the line, turning the paper as I go and then I can just pick that bit of paper out. Now everybody will apply different amounts of pressure and everybody will hold it slightly differently and that's absolutely fine. You need, to, you need to do what feels comfortable to you but the harder you press, the more likely you are to make a mistake. This paper is really smooth and it's lovely and as long as you have a sharp blade, you shouldn't need to press too hard. If you just really lightly, gently follow the line and then if you need to go back over it, that's absolutely fine, but better to do that than to press really hard because your hands will ache. Another thing that I'd really recommend to do is with your spare hand is to hold the paper down close to where you're cutting and this will provide extra strength to the paper and help prevent it from tearing. Now, I'm about to go around a curve I'm going to turn the paper again so that I'm cutting towards me. I'm going to put my blade in and make sure that I'm happy with the position of the blade and if I'm not I'm going to take it out and then I can just find that spot again until I know that I'm happy and I'm just going to really gently follow the curve. Pushing down the paper with my spare hand I'm going to stop. Now if I'm happy with the position of my blade I can continue and if I'm not I'm just going to take it out, take a deep breath and then start again. And then slowly moving round, take it out. As we're going round the bend, reposition. And we can do this as many times as we need to on the curves until we feel confident. And then we just pick that section out and that can get moved out of the way. So when you're ready to take your excess paper out, 
I like to get the tip of my blade and I stick it in the middle. And then I have a handy little bowl that I always keep next to me, which I fill up with all the excess pieces. Otherwise you'll be on your hands and knees at the end of it collecting them all. When you're approaching the really small areas, in particular um, where you've got circles, now if you look really closely you'll see that it isn't an exact circle because that's really, really tricky to do. So what I do is I put my point in and I'm going to move my blade whilst turning the paper and then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to do it in sections. And I'm going to slightly rotate whilst also moving the blade all the time pushing down with my spare hand. I'm just going to keep moving round. So I'm not going to try and attempt to cut it all in one go. As you can see, I'm doing it in little sections and then again using the tip of my blade just to pop that bit out and pop it in the bowl. And there's your little circle. In the middle of this leaf there is a very small section that needs cutting out and if you're feeling a little bit unsure, don't worry too much. I would just cut what you feel comfortable cutting. You can see that there's lots of space here that doesn't have anything cut. So if you make a mistake and you accidentally cut too much, I'm going to do that as an example. And again on this side I'm going to cut outside of the lines just to show you that actually that's okay. So don't panic too much. And then if we turn that over, you'll see that it still looks really lovely. So I've moved on to um, one of the beginner templates, the feather. I've cut all the central areas out like I suggest. Um, and now I'm gonna show you how to cut away the edges. So the reason that I've left the edges in so far is because it gives the paper extra stability and as I'm constantly rotating the paper, as I'm cutting out the central sections, it also helps having these spare bits of paper around the edge so that they're not catching on the side of your cutting mat. So I'm going to start, like I always suggest with your tip, before you start cutting, just make sure it's in the right place and that you're happy, using your spare hand to press down, hold the paper and cut away. I'm always cutting towards myself and never away. I'm going to put my tip where I'm happy and then I'm going to gently go around and I'm going to rotate the paper so that I'm always cutting down and towards me. I'm going to stop when I get to a point, take my blade out, put it back in in a position that I'm happy with, using my spare hand to hold down and cut round. Now at this point I've got all this section cut and I've got all this section cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tip of my blade into the point and I'm going to cut away here. Then I'm going to come back to this point and I'm going to cut away here. Now I can remove this section. Now it's much easier to remove the edges in sections rather than cut around the whole thing and trying to remove a whole big section of paper. So I'm just going to continue always pressing down with my spare hand. Remember you can do this in sections, don't feel like you have to do it all in one go. When I'm going to get to the end and then I'm going to cut away this section. I've forgotten to cut this little bit here so I'm just going to go back over that. Using the tip of my blade, take it out and put it in my little bowl. So this side I've already cut all the way around this edge. So now I'm just going to take away sections, I'm going to find a point, I'm going to put my blade in, I'm just going to cut away. Again I'm going to find a point, down and away from myself, 
always still pushing down with my spare hand in case there's any bits. For example here where I actually haven't cut this line. So I'm going to push down and just go along, follow the line. Again I'm going to find a point pushing down with my spare hand and then this bit should just fall away. Now this is the back of the paper cut with the lines on. Now that it's finished I can turn it over to reveal the finished design. Now I can have a look at it and I can see that there's little bits so I can always just turn it back round and cut away any little sections that I'm not happy with. So now you've cut out all the edges and you're happy with your final paper cut, are you ready to display it? And I find the best way to do that is with a nice contrasting background. Really hope that you've enjoyed my top tips for paper cutting today and that you enjoy making your way through the paper cutting craft pad, adventures in paper cutting and don't forget that I'd love to see your images. If you share them on social media, please use the hashtag PaperCutCraftPad and then I can have a look and see what you've all been up to and hopefully, as you get to the end, you'll be able to produce something like this. <laughs>